absolute blessing. We're really excited to share this. Tune in to CBM. See it happen. Start saving for your golden years with a Sagicor Lifestyle Approved Retirement Scheme. The time by Sagicor Life is 7 o'clock. CBM News at 7 Wednesday headlines, courtesy of Heart and SDA Trust, Jamaica's Human Development Agency. Tonight in CVM News at 7, prominent Spanish town based doctor arrested. The connection the police are making. Brazen daylight robbery foiled, another policeman is injured in the ordeal. And Juno Foreign Minister apologizes, blaming team member for using flag to cover former Prime Minister's faces. Also this evening, board orders Steertown Academy principal out. In the business report, entrepreneurs urged to think about corporate governance. While in sports, hurricanes bowled out for 300 by volcanoes. From Kingston, Jamaica, this is CVM News at 7. I'm Stephen McHugh. And I'm Carolyn Brown. It's Wednesday, April 17, 2024. Thanks so much for joining us. A 65-year-old doctor who operates at 55 Young Street in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, has been arrested by the Counterterrorism Organized Crime Investigations Branch, CTOC. In this developing story, the physician was taken into custody for alleged involvement with the Teshamilla led faction of the Klansman gang. Head of the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Crime Portfolio, Deputy Superintendent Fitz Bailey, confirmed the details to CVM News. A gloomy afternoon got even gloomier when two assailants, a man and a woman, We do apologize for the incorrect insert there. That actually was the story where the police are searching for two sp suspects following a foiled afternoon robbery at a store in Halfway Tree, St. Andrew. Now, the store owner who was shot is now in hospital in stable condition, as Trisha Gay Kelly reports. Another victim, a customer, was also injured in that attack. A gloomy afternoon got even gloomier when two assailants, a man and a woman posing as customers, targeted the IMU's phone store in Halfway Tree, St. Andrew. But in an attempt not to go down so easily, the store owner reportedly put up a fight. The male culprit shot the proprietor during the tussle. Information from St. Andrew's Central Division Commanding Officer Senior Superintendent Marlon Nesbeth is that the attacker's mission didn't stop there. One of his officers was shot. The manager for himself, um, by this time a policeman, uh, had, as a customer to an end of the premises. And there was an exchange between them. The, the policeman was injured, albeit not very serious, I'm advised. The robbers were able to make their exit. Though the modern-day Bonnie and Clyde managed to escape, SSP Nesbeth says the police are working on intelligence and are making some progress in their early investigations. The policeman in the hospital and it is being treated as also the proprietor. We are finding our efforts around it. We have good leads and we are hoping to find these perpetrators as quickly as possible. As a result of the incident, Halfway Tree, which is typically busy at that time, came to a standstill. The scene is being attended to. There has to be a little uh, delay in, in around this space. Uh, we are quickly tying up though. So uh, surely there should not be any major incident the usual flow of traffic, particularly at this time as it is almost where we are normally in peak, peak traffic hours. The injured policeman is now the second officer to be wounded in gunfire exchange this week. Trisha Gay Kelly, CVM News. And to this developing story, the board of the Steertown Academy in St. Anne has asked the school's principal and two teachers to resign. This follows the conclusion of a fraud probe regarding exams. Celine Campbell tells us more. 
Principal of Steertown Academy, Sharn Mongol, along with two teachers, have been ordered by the Academy's Management Board Personal Committee to step down from their posts following a disciplinary hearing. On Wednesday, CVM News spotted members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, escorting the principal of the school compound. The disciplinary hearing, which started on Tuesday, April 2, stemmed from a probe into an alleged Caribbean Examination Council CXC exam fraud. The probe was ordered by the Overseas Examination Commission. CVM News understands examination papers were leaked to several students during the sitting of the 2022 CXC exams. In a letter directed to Chairman of the School Board, Attorney at Law Anne-Marie Bishop Barrister, the Examination Commission appeared baffled by the school's sudden improvement in mathematics. The letter further states that some of the candidates who did poorly in math, city and gills, inexplicably excelled in CSEC math, thereby ranking the school's performance way above standard. When our newsroom sought further clarification from the board's chairman, Barrister says due to outstanding meetings, she will refrain from commenting until all matters are sorted. CVM News understands the school's management board voted unanimously that the educators be terminated. Celine Campbell for CVM News. Now, amid preparations for the Foreign Ministry's pivotal biennial conference, State Minister Orlando Terralong has found himself in controversy over the use of the Jamaican flag on his social media platforms. The State Minister has issued an explanation and an apology for the controversial post, but the opposition contends he hasn't gone far enough. Here's more from Raman Gordon. The Foreign Affairs Ministry is again in hot water. This time, under scrutiny, is State Minister Alando Terilong, who early Wednesday was embroiled in social media controversy. In a since-deleted post to Instagram and X, the minister was seen interacting with members of the diaspora in the UK ahead of the Foreign Ministry's 10th biennial conference. However, keen-eyed social media users quickly noticed the national emblem, the Jamaican flag, being used to cover the faces of former Jamaican government leaders who happened to be members of the opposition, People's National Party. When I first heard this, I thought to myself that this was very childish and tribal. I have since seen the response of the minister, but I believe that what he has done does not go far enough, and I believe that he has not understood the gravity of the situation. The minister online, hours after the controversy, sought to explain the dilemma. He blamed an aide and stated that their access to his social media accounts had been rescinded. First of all, the fact that an individual in that position, sensitive position, would have used the Jamaican flag to obscure the image of two former prime ministers speak to also a mindset. I believe that just removing the individual from that particular post doesn't send the message strongly enough for me. Dr. Angela Brown-Burke is Shadow Minister on Foreign Affairs and Trade. She's joined the Jamaicans, still expressing concern. I believe that this is a fundamental issue, especially given the kind of tribal past that we have had. Even today, as um, we look locally, there are individuals, there are some of us, who believe that there are times when policies and programs are implemented in far too much of a tribal manner. And so I believe, quite rightly, that Jamaicans ought to have been outraged. Efforts to reach the state minister up to news time proved futile. Ramon Gordon for CVM News. And as conflict unfolds between diaspora groups, Foreign Affairs, Min Foreign Affairs Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith is exuding confidence as the government prepares for the biennial conference. The minister on Wednesday revealed successful executions for the event so far, choosing to withhold comment on the standoff at the Global Jamaica Diaspora Conference. Sorry, that's the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. Ramon Gordon continues. Despite controversy threatening to cloud the government's 10th biennial conference, Foreign Affairs Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith remains confident ahead of the event in June. Speaking at a post-cabinet press briefing on Wednesday, Minister Smith said the event's international launches have gone off without a hitch. 
We are anticipating welcoming a good group of persons from far and wide because now we're engaging with our members in continental Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean, and as far away as Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, as well as our traditional families from the USA, Canada, and the UK. The global and regional launches are now underway. Our global launch took place on the 4th. We had a record 3,000 persons joining us online, so you must know the excitement level is high and there was standing room only in our Kingston Hall down at the Ministry. State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Orlando Terrilong is currently away on government business participating in virtual satellite launches for the event. He stopped in the UK first and then went on to continental Europe. He's headed to Miami tomorrow. I'm delighted to share that preparations are progressing very smoothly. 80% of our booths are booked out, and we have our GK Group, JN Group, VM Group, National Bakery, Digicel, Island Car Rental, Jamaica Tourist Board, Blue Maho Capital, Pinnacle Developments, NHT, JMMB, Stock Exchange, Student Loan, the Convention Center, which is giving us a very tiny discount, Ibero Star Hotel, Ocean 10 Hotels, and we are endorsed by the Jamaica Umbrella Group of Churches. The minister did not offer comments on the ongoing conflict at the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, where a rival faction has threatened to host a similar event while using the same name. She also did not advise on whether the registering of the council's name by the dissenting group in the U.S. would affect the government's business in the region. Through our conferences, which are held every two years, more Jamaicans with more ideas, more talents and more resources come to the table for us to work together. It has always been big, but this year it's going to be bigger. Ramon Gordon for CVM News. Meanwhile, Shadow Minister for Foreign Affairs Dr. Angela Brownberg is advocating for increased dialogue within the diaspora. Her call follows a rift threatening to taint the government's 10th biennial conference set for June. Now, the GOJ has issued a legal warning to a faction within the diaspora, which legally registered under the same name to operate in the U.S. Dr. Brownberg suggests it might not have been the best approach. I think it's always unfortunate when we get to a point where there is a split. But I'm not surprised because this kind of action is similar to what we have seen as a hallmark of the Andrew Holness led government, is one of what we call government badness. I believe it's important for us to quickly engage them to be able to get their perspective. What are you looking for? What are you not getting? What would you like to see in the future? Let us see if there is still a road, a pathway to um, bringing all of us back together. Do stay with us. CVM News at 7 will continue right after this. CVM News at 7 Wednesday headlines, courtesy of Heart and SDA Trust, Jamaica's human development agency. I think I've always dreamt of being a homeowner ever since I was a child to have my own space to be able to fix it up however I want. So choosing Sadikor Bank was somewhat of a no-brainer. We offer up to 100% financing, up to $2 million line of credit, competitive insurance rate, 100,000 cash back to assist with valuation reports, surveyors report, and we also offer very quick turnaround time. So I'm getting a solar panel system from Sadiqor Bank. It's a big deal. Not only will it benefit the environment, but it will also help me as a homeowner to drastically decrease my energy consumption. Such an amazing gift. And then sharing with me eco-friendly tips on how to preserve the environment and to beautify my home. Sadiqor Bank is happy to give to Venice the solar power system as we're always in our client's corner. Go it's ready, get big money, boom. Take a loan, enter to win money, boom. With cash with a bike or a smart TV, could even win a brand new car. Take a ready cash loan of $80,000 or more between February 19 and April 18, and you'll be automatically entered for a chance to win cash. A TCL Smart TV, AKT bike, or a 2024 Honda Creta. Big money, move. Oh.
authorized under Section 58.3 of the Bet and Gaming and Lodges Act. Courts ready cash, ready when you are. Money moves. Conditions apply. CVM News at 7 Wednesday, courtesy of elife.sagicorejamaica.com. Welcome back. Education and Youth Minister Fable Williams today shared the damning findings relating to the alleged abuse of several teens at a children's home in St. Elizabeth. Among the concerns, the minister revealed the school at the heart of the controversy was operating illegally. Trisha Gay Kelly has more. Fayval Williams, the Minister of Education and Youth, updated the country on the matter surrounding the U.S. teen boys who were allegedly abused at the Atlantis Leadership Academy in St. Elizabeth. The children who were there were uh, taken by the CPFSA. Uh, some, some of them have already been returned to their parents or other institutions in the U.S. and we continue to monitor and provide for the ones that are still here as they go through the process. And as it relates to the legitimacy of the school's operation. This particular institution in Treasure Beach was not registered with the Ministry of Education and Youth. They did make inquiries at some point in time some years ago, um, but we've searched our records and they were not registered. So they're operating in a space um, that is outside of the regulatory framework. The minister said the investigations are still underway into the allegations of abuse. The private facility is represented by attorney Dirk Harrison. Trisha Gay Kelly, CVM News. With a general election looming, the major political parties are oiling their machinery and finalizing their frontrunners. Trelawney Southern has been eluding the People's National Party for the past five elections, but remains one to watch. With a familiar face hoping to change the opposition's fate, here is more from Natalia Clark. He is back. Businessman Paul Patchmore says he is the man to break the Jamaica Labour Party's five-term winning streak in the Trelawney Southern constituency, a feat he's vying to accomplish on the People's National Party ticket. I've been on the ground for the past 20 to 25 years, preparing for this moment. The funeral home owner, who won as an independent councillor in the Lower Moors Division in 2012 after leaving the JLP, believes his chances of representing the PNP are looking good. Though the party has not won the seat since 1997, he is confident. With him as the candidate, victory is imminent. 71% of persons did not vote or did not choose to vote for some reason or the other. And that's my target market. The seat has been vacant since September 2023, following the resignation of a four-term member of parliament, Marisa dalrymple Philibert. Though constituents staged a protest for her to return, Pat Moore insists her legacy is not one that leaves him feeling threatened. The only foundation that Mama D have left is see, it shows that she's a great distributor of scarce benefits and spoils. That's the only thing she have ever done to South Trelawney. Insisting he is known and loved and has a proven track record of improving lives, Pat Moore waits patiently for the final say from the PNP executive. General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell told the CVM News the possibility of Pat Moore being selected is high. Nevertheless, if the wind doesn't blow in his favor and businessman Fabian Davis, who was originally slated for the seat, is selected, Pat Moore pledges the support. I applied to be a member of the People's National Party and that's where my loyalty is. The JLP is yet to confirm their candidate, but... Whispers in the political grapevine suggest former MP Devon McDaniel is coming back for the coveted post. Natalia Clark, CVM News. And in news on agriculture, the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, is on a quest to get more Jamaicans to cultivate backyard gardens. Each year, the entity allows citizens to access backyard gardening kits. This time around, focus was on the parish of Portland. Celine Campbell reports. 
CVM News reported on the skyrocketing vegetable prices brought on by the ongoing drought with the need for backyard gardens becoming more pronounced. Representatives from the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, on Wednesday seized the opportunity to promote backyard gardening by providing training to farmers, including first-timers. So we went through um, from basically site selection, um, seed selection, land preparation, care and management of the crops. We also did pest and disease management and composting. RADA's Home Economics Officer for the Parish, Georgia McLean, says more sessions are pending as the agency tries to get people into the habit. So we are planning to do um, follow-up sessions with these participants and beneficiaries. So we are not just leaving them on their own to go there. We are basically going to walk them through the process. Those in attendance found the session very informative and beneficial. I learned a lot here today. And I'm grateful for Rada for bringing in this, you know, to teach us how we can do backyard farming. There are times when I put seed in the ground and they don't grow because I have them too deep or the soil is not properly mixed or there's too much water. So for me, backyard gardening play a, a great important part in me because what I plant can really save me a lot to buy out in, in the market because I plant a lot of tomatoes, plant a lot of cabbage, pop chow, uh, do lettuce, I do also do peppers. RADA is responsible for promoting agricultural development across the island, especially in rural communities where it's considered the engine of economic growth. Celine Campbell for CVM News. Stay with us. Andrew Laidley joins us with the business news right after this. Authorized under Section 583 of the Betting Gaming and Lotteries Act. You deserve more than just a car. Embrace a new standard of luxury with a 2025 GWM Havav at 2024 prices. Elevate your driving experience with our sleek designs and intelligent safety crafted for you to go with more. Two free payments, one year free insurance, free petrol, three year service, six years warranty, and you guessed it, more. Offer valid at Stewart's Automotive Group, South Camp Road, Kingston, and Ironshore Mo Bay. Hurry, follow GWM to make those conditions apply. So I'm at a party vibing with a 10. At least I hope it's a 10. But I'm not sure because my contacts fell down the bathroom sink, so I can't see a thing. I don't know what to do. What I do know, though, is the smell of KFC hot wings. Delicious, irresistible wings I can enjoy with my eyes closed. KFC hot wings, a wing for the win. Business Report Wednesday is brought to you by the Grace Kennedy Financial Group. Grace Kennedy Financial Group. One group, one goal. Helping you to live gracefully. Good evening and welcome to the Business Report. I'm Andrew Laidley. 
Entrepreneurs are encouraged to think about their corporate governance framework from as early as the business conceptualization stage. Now that's because corporate governance is a crucial pillar of any successful business. But as you'll hear, there are many dimensions to achieving good corporate governance. Recent criticisms about how local board of directors are composed, the business report caught up with corporate governance expert Alicia Hussey to ascertain what a high-performing board looks like and how board composition impacts corporate governance. Board composition is crucial to good governance because when you think of a board, you're thinking of this oversight body that is going to lead the charge in ensuring that a company meets its ob objectives, you know, whatever the strategic plans are. Why is the company set up or why is the organization set up? She told the business report that Jamaica is above average in terms of best practices, but says there's still room for growth. There is some ground to cover, and you will see that also in the corporate governance index, the assessment done by that of all the companies that operate, you know, mainly on the stock market and so on. But we have come a long way because we see where the junior market companies, especially, there have been significant improvement there in governance practices because we do find that across the board companies are incorporating on a cultural level corporate governance best practices. So what's the ideal board composition? She admitted there's no rule limiting the amount of foreign nationals allowed to sit on any local board. Neither are there any restrictions on age or gender, but she cautioned that there are certain considerations which must be given to ensure board diversity. What a board or a company would want to be mindful of is that whoever is on the board is capable to give the time and effort that is necessary for proper oversight, you know, and, and monitoring. Um, what's important is that there is a good mix of independence so that, you know, ethical standards are maintained. The diversity is very, very important and how we balance independence is also very important, you know, the CEO is against the chair and all of that. In the meantime, Hussey stressed that corporate governance in most cases can determine the profitability of a company. Because governance should really be a cultural thing, practicing it or pretending to practice it will not make sense because you engage in proper governance or good governance to make sure that your company will remain sustainable, your company will remain profitable, you will inspire confidence in the investing public, as it were. The private sector organization of Jamaica PSOJ recently published the Jamaica Corporate Governance Code 2021, which is a merger of the 2016 Corporate Governance Main Code and the MSME Code and includes appendices specifically related to family-owned businesses, MSMEs, and non-profit organizations. Express Catering Limited ECL became the first junior market company to raise as much as 12 million U.S. dollars through a bond offer on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. With support from lead broker Maybury Investments, the 8.5% USD bond was listed on the Stock Exchange early Wednesday. During the listing ceremony, JSE Managing Director Dr. Marlene Street Forrest highlighted that the bond offer was a success because existing shareholders believe in the future of ECL. Based on the data available to us of the 515 account holders of this bond, 405 or 78% are shareholders in the company. That's significant. I really want you to recognize the significance of this. This is the power of the market and absolutely the power of having a ready pool of investors who believe in the company. And ECL stands to benefit from that entire growth because Sangster International Airport takes the clear majority of the arrivals of our visitors. And um, as it stands, that volume um, of passengers enjoying the facilities at the airport and enjoying what we offer our tourists, 98%. There will be mixed prices at the pumps tomorrow. A litre of 87 gasoline will go up $2.59. 90 gasoline will increase $2.60. Meanwhile, automotive diesel will shave $2.14 per litre. 
and ultra low sulfur diesel is down $1.87 a litre. Now, of course, retailers will add their respective markups to these prices. And that's your business report. Up next is your market summary. And do stay tuned for more CVM News at 7 with Curlin and Stephen after the break. <music> 